Hi there, it's Liam from Miniature Wargame Warriors here, uh, bringing you a quick fire review of the Stalingrad campaign book. So this arrived late yesterday for me, um, coming from Warlord themselves. I've got the nice miniature from them, the exclusive Vasily Sotsev model. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's pretty pretty decent. I had to, uh, I got a bit excited, I had to quickly stick on the base. I'll be priming that today. <laughs> There's quite a few options for snipers in this game book you'll see, um, so there's loads, loads of um, opportunities to use them sniper models, which sometimes, you know, especially when they fail to hit all the time, it's quite nice to have a few more options for them to make them a bit more deadly. Uh, you'll see see that later on in the preview. So, as you can see, Osprey Games has done a great job with this um, top quality book. Very thick, quite hefty, and uh, yeah, there's plenty to be getting on with. So let's just crack on. So when you look at the list of contents, you get a nice big introduction uh, explaining all the history behind uh, the Stalingrad campaign, including quite a lot of the run-up, which I was quite surprised about. So it's quite nice they give you a bit of bit of history before crossing the Don, approaching Stalingrad, um, so you can use a bit more of the terrain that isn't just the city fight stuff, which is quite cool. So it looks like there's about 22 scenarios total um, going across quite a range of terrain um, with a few, quite a lot of different uh, rule sets throughout. So yeah, you get a nice big introduction, a big timeline explaining the dates, uh, when the conflict, the conflict happened, key dates. You got nice pictures, loads of mini pictures all the way through. Nice big map of the area. See, showing the uh, Germans' plans to sweep round, take the oil fields, and then they got a bit stuck at Stalingrad. See, so, yeah, more as it goes on. Some nice miniatures there. The old propaganda guy there, it's quite cool. Some art that I think I've seen in the army book. So, this is the approach to Stalingrad. So this is the Germans trying to make a bridgehead. This is quite a cool one actually. So the Soviets have got to rush in and try and blow the bridge before the Germans come in and take it. It's um yeah, it's quite a nice little scenario. Uh, definitely be doing that one, I think. Me and Ken. Um, give them a bit more time to set up that board. So got next the dawn crossing so this is the Germans trying to get across the river in boats so there's a whole new uh, transport in here now, I don't know whether they're any in, in the other campaign books but they give you sort of rib boats and stuff rules for them which is quite cool uh, it's pretty nasty if you have to abandon ship halfway through the river um, but yeah it should be pretty cool I'll show you the rules later on for the transport units but it's quite cool they've added them in as well so dash to the Volga, this is when you get your first um, top secret unit or the, the sort of campaign Pacific unit. So it's Olga, she's a factory worker that basically put her hand forward to um, you know, fight in the front. And uh, yeah, she gives inspiring followers to her group. So the unit counts as fanatics as long as she's, uh, she's alive. So, and they're a green unit as well, so they can just you know, upgrade if they... Um, if they roll the good, good check on the, um, the the five plus on the ship, uh, you can also take some unarmed, you know, basically the partisans militia, um, with the fanatics roll, which is quite nice. And yeah, you get five unit, five men in there, or five men and women in there, and you can take another five. Oh no, additional seven, unarmed if you wanted to as well. So this is uh, Spartanovka, um, this includes preliminary bombardment, so it's them sort of approaching the outskirts I guess of the, or the Soviets trying to take back some, some of the village from the uh, Germans. Once again you can see there's quite a lot of different scenarios that doesn't include too much terrain, especially ones like this, it's just a little village outskirt so it's quite an easy one to to set up if you only got a bit of terrain you don't have to have the whole star and grab board if you if you 
haven't got it straight away, you can sort of build up to that. Uh, scenario four, do not retreat. So this is Germans trying to hold the village whilst the uh, Soviets in, encircle them. Very nice. Oh, and uh, one cool thing about this as well that I read yesterday a bit of. Um, so this is when you start getting the sh fuel shortages and the ammo shortages, which I'm not sure whether they've been in any other campaigns, but it does add a little bit more of a sort of game mechanic to some of these games, especially when some of them are uneven points. It kind of evens it up sometimes as well. So with the fuel shortages, um, it adds a bit of secrecy as well to it. So you, what you get is uh, 2d6, I think it's plus 2 or plus 3 um, fuel for the game. And you keep that from the opponent, so you know how much fuel you need, you've got, and how much you can use, and how much you've got left. But the opponent doesn't until the end. So there's that thing of, you know, as an opponent, you won't know whether they can move their vehicles anymore. But if they get in a tricky position and run out of fuel, then uh, their tanks kind of immobilise for the rest of the game. But there's ways of getting more, as you can see, the supply drops happen now again. If you collect that canister, it gives you extra fuel for a couple of turns or whatever. Uh, you've also got ammo shortages as well, so your men can only shoot half their units, so half, up to half of your um, units can shoot, whereas the rest can't. So you have to choose quite tactically, tact tactically which ones are going to shoot for that turn. But there, once again, there's more ammo arrives via supply drops if you can sort of, you know, obviously in this scenario, for instance, if this canister actually sways off, you risk sending your men out there to get that extra ammo, which is very cool. They give it, it's not just for the Germans as well, later on in the campaign when the Soviets are encircled, there's a few, few sort of games where they've got to deal with that as well, which is quite cool. So we're on to the fourth army Southern Thrust. So... This is quite a big game on a 6x4. Oh yeah, and that's another thing. Some of these games are only 4x4 as well, which is quite cool, but there's quite a lot of uh, rules in it um, to sort of, you know, make it quite a complex game, even though it's on a 4x4. So, scenario 5, hill 154.2. So, there's a big ridge line of hills here, and the, the Russians have to try and swarm up the hill to, to grab the uh, raised positions from the Germans. And they're all dug in as well, which is going to make it even harder to get out of the way. So yeah, that's that. And it shows a nice picture of the Volga with all the, all the Stalingrad on the on the riverside. The initial assault. So this is when Stalingrad starts becoming the big sprawling city, hive city. So downtown Stalingrad. So this is on a 4x4, this one. A rail station, so you've got to try and control the rail station at the end of the game. Uh, so it's quite cool you know, to have that terrain if you've got it. To use it, it also gives you, you know, it says you can use another building as, as a key position, like HQ or something they want to take. Very nice. Starts a night fighting as well. So yeah, you'll be getting on top of each other pretty, pretty sharpish. Alright, so this is the Verden Revisited. So, this is the first one uh, that I'm not sure whether any other campaigns book have done, but it's got protracted battles. So, obviously, a lot of these battles took place over several days, maybe weeks, months, rather than, you know, in our, in our time scales, it's over within a couple of hours. Um, so, with this protracted battles, they're up to 10, 10 11 turns, maybe more. Um, and what you get is day one is turn one to five. On turn five, it becomes night, and it's harder to hit people. And that's also when your reinforcements come in. So you get a second fresh wave of troops for turn six to ten. Um, which after six, night fighting then goes away, as in the night's over, and then you carry on fighting. So it's a very long battle. I mean, you know, our battles, if you watch some of our battle reports, maybe last sort of two three hours. These 10, 10 round, 10 turn battles are going to take six hours, so they might have to be two parlors, which, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so in this one, you've got to tr control the uh, the water, the water sort of canisters. Some turns. Use a couple of tin cans for that. Might have to make some. 
so Southern Sun Grad. So you can always refer back to that map earlier on. See how it's all progressing through the sea. So Soviet deployment, German deployment on the table edge. Looks like there's another four by four. <coughs> so this is a grain grain elevator is in the middle of the board and it kind of spawns smoke into the battlefield every turn which is quite cool uh, so you know smoke's always quite an interesting mechanic anyway even though it doesn't always get utilized when it should be um, but to have a random smoke appear on the board is going to add a bit of uh, tension to the game so this is uh, drag dragon's last last stand so it looks like the russians are in the middle Germans encircling and um, Soviets suffer from ammo shortages and there's no supply drops on this one so <laughs> they literally have to choose who they want to fire each turn <laughs> very cool the carnal house so it carries on fighting through and um, looks like now this is when you get loads of terrain on the board I say it's only 4x4, four four. Um, yeah 4x4 four four, but you've got a lot of buildings there, a lot of fighting to go through. You see the lovely picture there. So it looks like they've got to control certain key objectives within the Soviet's deployment zone by the end of the game. Uh, right, so Sniper Jewel, so this is enemy at the gates basically. <laughs> they've looked at enemy gates and they thought how can we make that into a nice little combat. So you got the rules for Vasily um, on this page, and yeah, the Master Sniper on this one. So they've got quite a few new units in this as well. We'll see later on in the um, in units uh, later on, but there's you can take a lot more than just the one Sniper now, which is quite cool. So in this battle, you've got to kill people with your Snipers or with your uh, just with your units, and then you got to take the dog tags. So there's a bit of you know, you've got to carry on advancing to take the dog dog tags in order to get the VPs, which I thought was quite cool. Um, so yeah, Vasily, he always wounds on a two plus, which is pretty damn cool. But there is a downside to that. He has to once he's fired, he has to move the next turn or advance. So it means you can't just sit there. You have to keep moving, firing, moving, firing, which uh, adds a bit of flavour onto it. Obviously, you know, in the movie, that's pretty much what happens, which is quite cool. So as for the master sniper, uh, Koenigs, I think his name is, um, he is still pretty deadly. So he can counter fire a, um, a sniper if they fire at him rather than, usually I think ambush is normally on a run or advance. So this one he can actually fire back if he's fired at, which is quite cool. Uh, and he's also, he's a camouflager. Uh, master so when he's ambushed or downed he is also hidden so it makes him even harder to take out very cool Pavlov's house so September 1942 now moving into the winter on oh, 4x4 so you got the rail station and you got all these key positions you'll take Factory district, so this is cool. So, this is them fighting over the T 34 factory, trying to stop them rolling them off the line still. October 1942. So, they're trying to take out the, uh, the tractor factory. So, there's constant bombardment in this one as well. So, you use preliminary bombardment every, I think it's uh, every turn or you put a dice, a special mark dice, so a bit of tape on it, I think. Um, and you just want to lay on. I'll, sh I'll show you the rules for that later on, anyway. Adds a bit more, uh, a bit more carnage to the game. So, uh, scenario 14. So you've got these key positions for the Soviets to deploy in, and the Germans come in from, from this side and have to try and take it out. It's getting lots of factory buildings, lots of warehouses. Pretty cool. Operation Hoopitus. It looks like a big defense line in the middle. You've got to hold the 
the apothecary house and the commissar's house, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, there's demo charges as well. You'll see them rules later on, they're pretty nasty. <laughs> so the beginning of the end. So Operanus, Operation Uranus. So this is when the Soviets pushed back and circled Stalingrad and took out the last German forces in Stalingrad. So Gods of War, this is this is the first one that uh, introduces the tank body ones. Obviously there's not much tank wars in this book because of the nature of Stalingrad. Um, but this is when you start getting the um, sort of tank platoons. So the, the Russians have to come in this side, storm the first trench line with their infantry and then their tank platoon then comes in afterwards to take to help take the second one. It's going to be quite a big slog that one for the Soviets. Should be pretty cool. So, Operation. So we've got more, more books on the boundaries, villages. Obviously, the Germans retreating, trying to hold the villages. They're told basically to to hold or die. So, yeah, pretty grim. Full speed ahead. Looks like once again, Germans deploying in the middle. Soviets coming in to take them out, push them back. The Kessel. So this is the Germans' last sort of hurrah to hold them back, I suppose. Rescue their troops. Operation Thunderclap. So yeah, quite a lot on the outskirts. Like you can see, you know, you don't need a lot of terrain for these ones. You can. Could easily play one of these as a one shot just to sort of uh, you know, use this book, which is quite good. And there is, say, the scenarios are really good. Do or die, so this, yeah, here we go. So the soldiers of the sixth army know that they, if they do not succeed to their breakout now, they will be destroyed by the Russian forces as they're closing around them. All troops in the German platoon are upgraded fanatics for free, so this is the last ditch attempt of the uh, Germans to escape. Um, Operation Ring. So this is them ringing in the noose and destroying the Germans. So, Legacy gives you a nice bit page of history of the legacy of you know, what was spent for the motherland. Uh, right, so you're on to the new troop choices. So, for the Soviets first, um, you've got the nice new Commissar groups. So you've got one that's... Uh, the, what's it called, the Funtnik, Funtnik Commissar, so these ones give you a um, treat inexperienced squads, they ignore the minus one to hit, so yeah, I mean for conscript groups, that minus one to hit is always, all, always a nasty thing, so be, be able to have a Commissar there um, to, to keep that minus one from affecting them, it's just brilliant so yeah he wants and he got a second squad which i'm guessing is like the sort of trainee political or maybe certain parts of the war they would have had there's certain parts of the starling red campaign they had these two but they've also got that um take away the minus one but they don't have the no not one step back rule actually so that might be you might be able to take both of these at the same time which is even better that's a lot of conscripts you can have all firing at normal regular shots so these are the sniper groups i was talking about earlier um they're very cool so what you've got is you've got a veteran sniper group which is a five-man sniper team so you've got extra wounds for your sniper rifle you can also take two sniper rifles in there and have an nco so yeah it's really really good you can have two um two sniper rifles in one group they have to yeah, they have to shoot at the same target, but still, two two sniper shots are always better than one because you always miss one. <laughs> Usually, you miss them all in the whole game. <laughs> so, to give you more chance of hitting, it's very good. So, you've also got this, which is like a trainee squad. So, you get one NCO and two men, which are regular. Um, it's a regular youth troop, but if the NCO, who's a veteran, is taken out, then the squad becomes inexperienced. But if the regulars are taken out rather than the NCO, then 
it becomes a veteran squad. So, because the, then the veteran sniper takes over and starts shooting away. Um, but it's, um, yeah, quick call. Cool. You've got that option to have the master sniper and the two the two trainees. Pretty cool. Uh, student officers group. So they're green. They're kind of like, a, they're kind of like an inexperienced rifle squad. But they can be given fanatics. In fact, they have, yeah, they have fanatics. So that's cool. They're just fresh out of training. They really, uh, they really want to show show their zeal quite cool that can be upgraded to uh, 11 man squad as well fanatics very cool uh storm group so these are the uh guys put together to take out buildings storm into buildings and take out the um the german defenses so they have loads of smgs armed to the teeth so they're especially equipped for close combat and uh, carry extra grenades, knives, sharpened spades. They always, shoot, they always, they always go first, basically in combat, which is very nice when you're trying to go building to building. Right onto the vehicles. So this is really cool. The T34 tractor factory T34. So it's fresh off the line. Um, so you, they're only 140 points for an inexperienced tank. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the groups that you can take, the platoons you can take, you might be able to take one or two of these. So the fact that they're an experience isn't too bad when you've got two of them on the field. So you have to take one of the three uh, negatives though, because obviously they've had to rush on off the production line. So you have to take either no optics, which means you have to, you're reduced to 36 inch range, which isn't too bad when you're city fighting anyway, really. Uh, or uh, take uh, where is it? Hastily repaired. So this is a knocked out T-34 that's been hastily repaired. They always suffer full damage, not just superficial. So pretty dangerous, especially with inexperienced. So you got a factory workers crew as well. So they literally repaired the, so repaired the tank and they get him straight in to uh, fight the battle. So they always have to take all the checks because they're obviously so busy trying to actually figure out how to drive the things because they, they're not trained. So onto the German units. So this is an alarm unit. So these are uh, ones where the, the Russians have taken out, taken back of HQ and the, these guys have, are the chefs and the, the sort of people that weren't the soldiers that weren't ready to, to fight and they just pick up whatever they can so they have to roll a one to three they get they just get rifles uh four four they get submachine guns on a five or six they get a light machine uh, light machine gun so yeah a bit of randomness but obviously plus pluff wise if they were sort of woken up in the middle of the night they just grab whatever they can and start fighting uh panzer grenadier squads so these guys have the mechanized inventory rule, which means they get to re-roll failed all the checks that are required to mount or dismount vehicles. So yeah, the amount of times I've been stuck on a truck or something because I've taken a few pins and they've got to go down. Gives you that extra flexibility to say, yeah, I'm, you know, I want to sort of definitely want to get out of this vehicle to this turn because they're going to get blown up. Uh, you've got the Jaeger squad. So these guys are mountaineers, so they treat rough ground as open terrain, which is going to be very handy when there's rubble everywhere and you know bits of broken building everywhere. So yeah, they're a bit of a sort of unique squad to the book. 50 points for Regna, not too bad. Uh, so Croatian, Croatian Legion, this, this is pretty cool. Um, so these guys, instead of getting the initiative training, they get... Uh, Croatian Pride. So when you get a Snap 2 action uh, order, they remove two pins instead of one. Very nice. So this is the boats I was talking about, the transport boats. So you get three options for these. Uh, you get one at the top here, which is... Uh, yeah, just like a rib boat, I suppose. Used mainly by the Pioneer units. You got a three meter rib boat. Um, 
rubber inflatable boat. So yeah, this one's got a bit more armor in it. Not really too much, but could be worth it. Worth taking the extra armor. But some of the some of the ones like the early ones when they're having across the rivers, that you have to take these as transports in order to get across the river. And then this this one here gives you that light light anti tank option of transport as well. So these ones not are not allowed to be given the run order as well. These ones, whereas this one can, so that also makes up the points there. Okay, so remaining new units as well. So you get a tankette R1 tankette, which is pretty cool. So these ones have only got two crew. So it looks here, overwork drivers, two crewmen. So the, the driver has to use the MMG, so you can't fire the MMG if you've done an advance or run. Because he's too busy steering the steering the uh, tank. But it's a nice little tank here. I do love a tank here. Very really cool. And most of the games in this do give you the option of using a, a Romanian platoon as well, rather than just using the, the German platoons. So new options. So these are uh, certain scenarios, I think, give you the option to use these. Um, so, messengers. So, a lieutenant may be upgraded with one of the accompanying soldiers to a messenger for 10 points. So, captains may upgrade up to two of their accompanying soldiers as messengers for 20 points each. Oh, captains or majors, that is. So yeah, it might might make worth taking an extra two soldiers rather than just the just the one to relay orders. So if an first ability they get is if an officer is accompanied with a messenger and the unit is ordered to fire, the unit may use the relay orders instead to fire their instead of firing their weapons. If they do so, the range of the morale bonus and the U Men Snap 2 ability doubles. Very nice. Very nice. So your 12 inch morale bonus could be very handy in certain turns or you can use them preferred target messages are conspicuous any enemy within with an ambush order that can draw line of sight to this to this unit must choose to flip their dice to fire to resolve the shooting attack i suppose yeah so they're quite big targets when they're running across the road to try and send them send a uh, message and they're one use, so a running messenger during the fight, fire fight is dangerous and exhausting job. Each time the officer uses a relay or their ability, replace one of the messages in the mod, uh, messages model with a standard image from you. So yeah, demo charges. So these are really cool. So a new option for pioneers and assault engineers. So this gives you um, demo charges, which you can place once per day game give an engineer a down order to place a demo charge onto any point of adjacent to the man equipped with the demo charge if the engineer unit is inside of a building demo charge may be placed on the floor directly below the engineer's unit the following term the unit must be issued a down order or run order uh, if the run order is given the unit ends its movement out of range of the explosion whereupon it immediately explodes a four inch template <laughs> So yeah, you can take out a whole building with that and take out everyone inside, which is very cool. So this another cool one, new option for German infantry squads. So rifle grenade adapters. So these are 20 points each. A power adapter, up to two men can replace these rifle grenades. Um, and basically they give you a one inch HE shot each turn um, within six to, six to 18 inch range. So yeah, that could really up their uh, up their damage output, and they can be shot as smokes as well, which is really cool. Um, obviously, it's indirect fire, so you have to roll that six to hit. But you can still range in if you were defending an objective anyway. You could be ranging in with that. Very cool. I do like rifle grenades. It's a shame there's not any rules in there for the Siberian vets to uh, to have them because I've just started doing their squads and obviously. They've got a model, so 
Yeah. There we go. Um, so new theatre selectors. So obviously each each phase of the Stalingrad campaign, you've got the um, you've got the theatre selectors for each one, and the special ones that come with. So that looks like a fairly standard one. The Don Volga reinforced platoon. Nothing really out of all new for that. Apart from this, actually, so zero to two anti-tank teams. So usually with the Soviets, you can take uh, one, and you can take three options with that. But this one looks like you can only take zero to two. I imagine they've specified that for a reason, unless that means two lots of six. You can take up to uh, two lots of three. Sorry, so you can take up to six options. I suppose maybe. Uh, so you still get your, I guess you still get your free infantry squad for that. Hmm. So the factory tractor factory reinforced platoon. So this is a really cool one. You get uh, zero to two anti tank guns, which is very nice. Um, but you also, which yeah, I've actually may have to get my other light anti tank gun painted up for that. So this one gives you the option of. 0 to 2 tractor factory T34. So, once again, that um, in T34 options are really cool. Uh, probably would take the lower range, the optics. You know, in the end of the day, it's style and granite, so you're not going to be firing 60 inches away anyway because there's not many uh, there's not many targets that far away, really. So, not one step back platoon. So, I'm guessing this is the Commissar heavy one. So you can take that front nick commissar. Uh, it looks like you can only take one of them. So yeah, it's not too bad. But yeah, this is the one where you'd be putting all the inexperienced row from the squad, maybe up up and with a few Soviet vet squads as well. Looks like you can take them as an option. Oh, you can take them sniper teams as well. So, off map batteries. Oh, no transports. So, you're not allowed transports because it's very hard to get on the trucks. This is probably during the actual main combat year, September. So, they were already in Stalingrad by then. So, off map batteries. Uh, Chekhov wisely ordered all divisional artillery to stay on the eastern bank of the Volga where there's no, where there's no safe location to position. <laughs> Right, okay. Um, so as such, Soviet players are not allowed to take artillery units. Instead, to represent the considerable firepower mass on the eastern bank of the Volga, fire forward artillery observers may may order a second artillery strike. Wow, that's cool. So you can give anyone in this detachment as well, this platoon, uh, a plus three, um, three points plus to give them fanatics. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's any of them. So you could even give, well, you could even give your conscripts that, make them even more tougher. So no land beyond the Volga. So once again, you got that off, off map battery again. Yeah, much more extra to that. Cavalry group, Soviet cavalry. So yeah, zero to for infantry squads or cavalry squads. So mountable formation, so instead of three a three rifleman squad, you can take a T sixty or a T seventy instead. Wow. Inexperienced, but it's free. Why not? May need to get another T sixty. T seventy. Uh so Uranus uh tank platoon, so this is your your tank Tank Wars ones. Very cool bit of art there. So you've got your forward detachment. So you've got command vehicle, so this is tank vehicle, tank wars again. So this is them pushing back the German lines, that's why you can get the transports now. Flying tank platoon, wow. So this is mainly made up of the 0 to 2 KV KV 8s or the OT 34s, so that's the flame T 34s. Uh, Germany, Gates of Stalingrad. 
so this is obviously the start for them. Uh, nothing majorly different about that really. Going from the uh, reinforced platoon, so pretty standard stuff. Some restrictions obviously on the, some of the early war stuff rather than the or the mid-war stuff rather than the late war. Uh, Stalingrad armored, armored platoon. So oh no, they're just yeah. So the Panzer Grenadiers. So a lot of them mechanized. So uh, a truck or a, maybe choosing as a transport for each Panzer Grenadier squad. Yeah. Yeah, so you like mechanized troop, mechanized inventory. Uh, Rattake, um reinforced platoon. So this is getting into the the street fighting. Assault gun groups. What's this then? So, inventory forces tasked with capturing Stalingrad were backed up by several platoons of Stugs assault guns. To represent this availability of support, you can have two choices rather than with any configuration. So, yeah, Stug heavy lists. So, Ken, you're going to need some more Stugs. <laughs> uh, so, you've got into hell. So, reinforced platoon 19. November 1942. Once again, you've got the Stug back up. So, this is your armoured platoon. So, this is your tank wars one. Command vehicles and such. Uh, Panzer Corp armoured platoon. So, that's another tank wars one. So this is uh, December, November to December 1942, desperate measures. So this is when they're, this is the infantry platoons when they're stuck, I guess, in Stalingrad. So desperate measures. This ad hoc nature of the formation means it rarely armed, had any armoured support. Instead, the alarm units rely on handheld AT and AT guns. To reflect this, any infantry unit in this selector can purchase AT grenades for one point rather than two. So yeah, you don't have access to tanks in this, but all your infantry for one point extra, you take the anti-tank grenade. Looks quite cool. All right. Thunderclap reinforced platoon. Let's see where we get your vehicles back. Uh, bring only what you can. So the dire lack of horses and mechanized transports means that almost all heavy units, heavy equipment was left behind. This list can only take artillery units with guns that can be uh, manhandled and, that, and uh, that can require towing. And any that require towing are left behind and cannot be included. Okay, so you... Yeah, so you get tank options, but you can only take light artillery and light anti-tank. So Romania, so the first armoured Romanian division. So this is yeah. So this is your armoured platoon for tank war type battles. Cavalry troop. So I assume can include one or more cavalry squads that can mount a HQ on a horse as well for five points. Nice. So scenario special rules. Constant bombardment. This is a typical short dimmery bombardment. So yeah, a lot of these have this. Um, so this gives you... <coughs> so you put a bit of tape on one dice. Small bit of tape. When this dice is drawn player who die belongs to resolves an artillery attack against the enemy units within line of sight of any of their officers, artillery for observers or spotters, using the preliminary bombardment rules. So it's so like an in-game preliminary bombardment, it doesn't affect all the troop, all the units, only the ones that your officers are calling in targets. So rules for snow, obviously it's a difficult terrain, it's hard to get through half of the movement I think. Unless you got skis. Uh, dug in rules, so it gives you an extra bit of cover unless you move or fire. Uh, unless you move, sorry, fire to run. You can still keep the dug in bonus. Pretty good. Uh, dug in vehicles as well. 
Duffy vehicles in hidden setup. Uh, fuel shortages, so yeah, once again. Also, it's 3d6 plus 3, so that's how many. Yeah, so ah, okay, yeah, so you get d6 plus 2 for each mechanized vehicle in their force. So, for example, you'd roll 3d6 if you had three vehicles plus 6, then that's how much fuel for you got, you got for the whole side, and then you've got your ammo shortages. Supply drops, I explained earlier. Uh, city fight rules. So, rules presented in the campaign book to reflect unique aspects of the modern times. So, to represent this, yeah, so there's a special city fight um, food bar chart. You've got uh, rules for rubble. So moving in rubble counts as rough ground. So yeah, the mountaineer troops will be pretty cool to use in there. Uh, so tanks in rubble. I think I've seen this in other books, but um, yeah, obviously heavy tanks are going to have trouble getting up uh, or may, may get stuck on rubble. So to represent this, you've got to roll this chart every time you move a tank onto rubble. Uh, it's usually bad. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but it might be in desperate circumstances you need to support the troops. You got them out of the rubble, take that shot. So shooting into rubble as well uh, gives you a minus checks unless the unit has done certain things. So this obviously shows where their positions are, otherwise they're quite hard to hit within the rubble. Uh, buildings, so it shows you how to fight the multiple part buildings. You've also got sewer rules in some of the maps as well, so you can have some sewer movement going on between certain building blocks. So you've got your protracted battles links here, so these last 9 to 10 turns instead of 6 to 7 rounds. Reserves come in turn 5, and they come in instantly as well. Uh, turn 5 is night fighting again, and you can also dig in on turn 5, you can dig in positions as well, for the ones that are already on the battlefield. Which is quite nice, obviously you might need to rally by then if you've got lots of uh, pin markers, but it's nice that you've got the option to dig in instead. Uh, so campaigns, so this is quite cool, there's, um, there's a few in the back here showing you how if you wanted to run a campaign, so yeah you can do it by sort of territory and stuff, um, got this nice little campaign map as well, so you could uh, you know, put little pin markers on there I suppose to say you won here, so yeah for Four to eight people. This is the Grand Stalingrad campaign, August 1942. Last 15 games, and you pretty much play through the whole book. Uh, attack on the factory district. So this focuses mainly on the factory maps. Uh, two to two to six players. You got these trackers as well, so you get extra order tokens as you go through. Some extra rules as well, I guess, if things can, if certain things happen. Um, yeah, so you've got a two player one here, so recommended two players. Final one sort, so this is like the end of the Stalingrad campaign. And then you've got a two player long game, longer campaign variant, so this is um, follows the grand campaign rules but with the following changes. So it's basically the grand campaign but for two people. That's quite good, especially if you haven't got that many people in a group. You can, uh, Right through it as a, as a two player versus each other, just trying to unlock new rules. But yeah, that's it. Good night, nice bit of art at the back there, and that's it, guys. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the preview. I know a lot of people are getting them, um, sort of sporadically, a lot of people have got them already. Uh, I received mine yesterday, so yeah, if you like this content and you want to see more, uh, please like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, you'll be seeing games once the lockdown's lifted. Me and Ken will be playing some games and uh, leading up to his nice new board that he's building. So yeah, I hope you like it, guys. If you like it, please like, subscribe to the video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.